So I have a question for those of you out there who have children or uh, a team, people that you're trying to lead, that kind of a thing. So whether you manage a team, a department, whether you run a small business, I have a lot of real estate folks that I work with. So if you're a broker or a team lead manager, that kind of a thing, I have a question for you. Do you put an equal amount of effort into everybody that works for you? And I'm talking about like directly in, in uh, below your per certain position. Here's the thing that I see a lot. I get some clients who come to me, and I'm going to use the real estate example because that's the one I kind of deal with the most. And they're like, I don't want to do this anymore. I'm tired of it. Forget it. I'm going to go, I'm going to stop managing people and I'm going to go back to just doing my own thing way less hassle. I can't do this anymore. And what I normally say is, okay, are you sick of leading or are you tired of leading people who refuse to be led? And they're like, ooh, number two. So typically leaders love to be leaders. They, they're driven, they're ambitious, they worked hard to get where they are and get so frustrated when everyone under them doesn't even have even like 1%, it appears, of the drive that they had. And it's super confusing. So here's what happens. They go whole hog into putting so much effort into these people to lift them up because they've hired them to work with them because they saw their potential. And I put that in air quotes very much on purpose because potential does not always turn into value. What you see in someone else is often a reflection of the piece of you you see in someone else, right? You see, oh, you know, they could be driven. They could be ambitious. They have so much to offer. They're smart. They're this, they're that. Usually you're seeing yourself reflected in that person. And so you think, mostly erroneously, that if you just guided them, trained them, coached them, consulted with them, casualed them, you know, mentored them, maybe mildly threatened them, that they would come up into your level. And you get really upset when they don't, or even worse, if they leave. And I've dealt with a lot of people who've gotten rip roaring angry when someone they've invested a lot of time in leaves, right? They go somewhere else. Here's the thing. And I'm going to save all of you managers, team leads, future CEOs of the world, um, some time. The only people that you should invest in, and by that I mean actually put in an extra amount of effort, like go the extra mile. The only people who deserve that much effort from you are the ones who come and ask for it. You cannot treat everybody the same. If you have a team of 10, you cannot mentor all 10 of them. You cannot invest your time, blood, sweat, and tears, brains, coaching, consulting power into all 10 of those people. Because chances are none of them don't want it in the first place. They are not ambitious. They are not starters. They're not you. And yet, oh, I know as it pains you, you have to let that go. My advice to people who are in this situation is this. Care for everyone. Make sure that you know, the, the basics are met, that everyone feels welcome, you are taking care of them. They still care, but do not invest unless they come to you and say, hey, I want to do better. I want to do more. I want to go further. I want, I want, I just want more. Those people, all the time in the world, go nuts. Give them all you've got because chances are they're going to be a rising star. The problem with most people who lead teams is they think everyone is a rising star. That's not the case. So my advice again to you is, say the next time you have a team or office meeting, hey, everybody, so glad you guys are here. And we will make sure that everything you need, you have. You'll have access to me for questions, no problem. However, if you really want to advance your career or your business, or whatever, you have to come to me. And it's very simple. You send them a link, and it's a Calendly, or book you me or appointment core, and they can book into your calendar. And when they do that, that's your signal. Hey, this person has a fairly good chance of actually being worth your time. So you, the manager, the leader, your time to be invested in this human being because they're coming and asking you for it in the first place. So again, 
if you run a team and you invest equally in everyone and you bend over backwards to get them coaches, train them, um, meet with them on a regular basis, give them stuff for free. A lot of companies that give their employees or their contractors, again, depending on your model, they just give them a lot of shit for free. Don't stop. Give it up. They don't want it. They're not thankful for it. They become entitled. And then if you stop, they get all mad and then they wander away. Not worth it. Not worth it. So you will go the extra mile only, only when someone comes to you and says, I want more for myself and I'm ready to work for it. So they're not coming to you saying, I want more for free. Those people are like, see you later. They're like, uh, teach me what you know, mentor me, guide me, bring me to the next level. And those are the ones you invest in. Okay. So if you want to be a leader, you have to understand you cannot treat everyone the same, but you can care without investing, care for everybody invest at those who come to you and say, I want to do more for myself. I want to learn from you. I would love whatever it is that they're asking for from a personal or professional development um, approach. Those are the ones that you can put your time into. Okay. Give that a go. Good luck and be a better leader today.